Dustin Poirier is in such an interesting spot. And as each day goes by, I keep getting a little bit more interested. Like, it hasn't been possible for Dustin to speak about this fight without it making headlines. And there's multiple tests that Dustin is dealing with. And whether he knows it or not, he's going to be graded. He's going to be graded by the promotion. So, let me give you a great example, guys. Let me tell you one of the biggest things that Dustin is up against right now, okay? It's, it's really a, a two-pronged litmus test. Dustin is a star. Not, not, not kind of. Not he's a really good fighter. They're all really good fighters. They're the ultimate in fighting. Dustin Poirier is a star. They will put a cameo on him or have him do a cameo. They flash a camera to him in the audience. He's doing nothing. He's in the audience wearing some fly shirt that I, I wish I had his shirt collection. I love him. That crowd will give a response while he stands there and does nothing. Peter, 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 Peter rolling, wolf pack, catch up, pull the sunglasses down. He does none of those things. He stands there. He no gimmick. They go crazy for this guy. Crazy for this guy. And is a constant main eventer. A guy that sells out arenas. This is one of the few guys that doesn't have to call out Conor McGregor and could get a fight with Conor McGregor, and we all know it. This is one of the few guys that does not have to campaign or lobby for Nate Diaz and could end up standing across from Nate Diaz, and we all know it. He's a star who's getting ready to do a co-main event spot. All right, great. First thing you must understand, the stars will generally fight each other, but every now and then they have to reprove their spot, and they really only have to do it once. If they can just do it once, they're not going to have to do it again for three to four years, and nobody's window is that long. Right? If, if you could keep that cycle going, then yeah, every three or four years, you're going to have to go out and do it again. And that's much, much closer to two and a half years. But you don't, he doesn't have two and a half years left in his career. Neither, neither's caught, neither's any of them. That's a broad stroke statement. I'm trying to prove for you that when you get called upon to do that, that's the test. Are you going to say yes or are you going to say no? Before you ever then have the outcome of the match, right now is prong number one. Are you still a partner? Do you understand the business and do you have respect for it? Which is no matter how bright your light gets, before it dims, you pass it to somebody else. Whether you're going to be referred to as a scumbag in a private text message that gets seized by a courtroom full of scumbags or not is going to be based on that attitude right there. So, Poirier accepts the fight and he accepts it in a co-main spot. And that's number two. When I told you there's a test going on that he will be graded on, whether he even knows it's happening or not, can you, as the star in the co-spot, outsell the rest of the card? Whoever outsells the card is the star. The star of the night is not the highest ranked. He doesn't even have to win that night. He just has to sell more than everybody else. Can you, when you're pulled down the card, still outsell, outsell the top match? And Dustin, the answer right now is yes. He can't do anything that's not interesting. He came out and denied the fight a week ago, and then he apologized for denying the fight. He'd missed a call from his manager. 
He got a headline for both of them. I mean, it was a really interesting position. And then all of a sudden, Matt Brown is realizing this. And then Matt Brown goes and makes a piece about that a week later. Then you, you got Jesse on fire has got to talk about it. And now all of a sudden, Chael's, I heard Matt Brown and Jesse talk about it. Now I got to come and do a piece. I mean, I'm telling you, the guy can't go wrong. Now, he's talking about his opponent. And he's saying that, and don't forget, Puri's an underdog, which which is a colossal mistake. There, there is no justification for whoever set that line. They had better sit there, hucker up, crossing their fingers that they get that one right, because there is nothing by the numbers that they can point to to justify Telling DraftKings, my partner, that they should put more money opposite Poirier than Foreman. There is nothing by the numbers, just so you understand this. This is 100% predicated on perception that one just got his hand raised at Madison Square Garden and one just got upset in Salt Lake City. And nobody has ever moved a line based on venue placement. That's what happened here. Madison Square Garden seemed so much more grandiose than Salt Lake City. That is what happened. But either way, Dustin is the underdog. And he has stayed, and Joe Rogan's even said it. And I don't know that Joe Rogan knows the other guy, and he's friends with Dustin. But Joe's just a straight guy. And Joe said, Dustin's getting his ass kicked by this guy. Joe said he's going to kick this guy's ass right back. But this guy is a killer. And for, for the style they fight, this guy's going to come out and touch him up. Not to mention, this guy's got the wind at his back and he's got momentum, right? He needs something a lot more than the rich guy that's already had it. I understand all those concepts. There is nothing that Joe said that is wrong. And Dustin came out and said, I do my best work in this position. I do my best work as an underdog. Really? Is that true? I can't remember what time he was. I'd have to go back to when he was 26 years old. He was fighting Conor McGregor. Nobody knew he was. He was some guy, the short hair do. Remember that? He had the short hair do. That's all you knew about him. He was out of some place called Lafayette, Louisiana. You know, leading into that fight is the single, my single favorite line in the history of our sport. Conor McGregor dropped it promoting that fight. And nobody heard it, and nobody appreciated it. <laughs> Do you guys know what it is? I've told you the story a few times. Conor McGregor was like behind scenes. He wasn't even out in front of an audience. And this was when this was when it was poor Conor. You know, you, you, you don't dress for the job that you have. You dress for the job that you want. It's a, it's a key to success. And you'll hear it, and it's a little bit cliche, but by God, it's very true. So you had poor Conor. He's in about a, a $280, $310 suit, all the way up with the bow tie. And these are not nice threads, by the way. These, this is just the nicest outfit that he could afford that would fit. And it only fit at certain times within his weight cut. I mean, it was this whole thing. He's in sunglasses. He's not in the Versace. He just in some uh, the off the shelf. You know, he's trying to do the gimmick. It's just a great spot. So, but just imagine that. And he's got some cheap camera. You know, this is before he, he, he commanded an Ari Alexa, all right? He's on somebody's like iPhone and he's talking about Dustin. But it's the greatest, it's the greatest line in the history of our sport. It's my favorite line, at least. He was talking about Dustin and he, and he defended him real fast. You know, he said, yeah, I'm a lot like him. I, I, or I appreciate him or something along these lines. And then, but here's the line, the exact quote. He says, he's a nice little hillbilly from a circus town, but it was in the, in the vein of defending him. Oh, he's like me. He's hungry. You know, he's taking opportunities. He's trying to come up. He's trying to get his name out there. He's willing to take risks. He works hard. Whatever it was in this context that he leads, leads in with and then to defend him, to build him up, he referred to him as a nice little hillbilly from a circus town. And because I know Dustin and I also know Lafayette, Louisiana, <laughs> Connor nailed it. It was awesome. It was this wonderful line. And, but I got to go back that far to find a time when Poirier wasn't expected to get the WIN. 
He was the favorite in his fight with Max, just to put a perspective. He was the favorite in his very last fight where he got upset but by Justin Gaethje. So, I'm not totally sure what Poirier's talking about. He says he does his best when he's an underdog. He's fully aware of the situation. He is not underestimating this opponent, which is something that I believe was counted on by my partners at DraftKings when they set the line. I believe that. I believe the person that turned this number in knew who Denise was, knew how great he was, and assumed because of the stardom start of Porte that he wasn't aware. Because he is in a hard fight, and he definitely does great work at all times, but there is nothing by the numbers that you could point to to justify how Dustin Poirier is an underdog.